The basis of all my growing decisions are limitation of space in an urban area um, and also how to produce as much as possible without extracting nutrients from another place, like without buying fertilizers. We try to use all nutrients that are readily available on our property. These are NFT channels. They've been around for 30 years. And the only thing that's different than what you normally see is how they're stacked vertically. Most of the time when you see these sort of systems, um, they're in greenhouses and they're done all horizontally. We don't have space for that here. But also it kind of optimizes sun exposure throughout the year. So for example, right now in the summer, all of my lettuce is bolting that's in the soil. Even with, I have a, a shade cloth up there. Um, but the way this works is as the solar incidence gets more vertical, they start to shade themselves. And in the winter, as the solar incidence becomes more at an angle, it starts to expose itself more. So it basically, this system self-regulates the sun all year round. Um, and in this neighborhood, we never get below 40 degrees. So I can be growing um, using this setup without alteration the entire year. And this is, doesn't a very big footprint at all. Looking at this, you said what, it's 18 it's, feet long? It's 12 feet long. Sorry, 12 feet long and, and it's the eight, depth is maybe two feet? Uh, it, 12 to 18 inches, yeah. Okay, so 12 yeah. inches yeah. by 12 feet long. Yeah. yeah. And really, sky is the limit yeah. in terms of how many tiers you could stack yeah. on top of this. Yeah. yeah. With, with your system, what are you envisioning for how many tiers you're going to ultimately use on this? Because I'm the one that's operating this, I'm six foot tall. I basically made it so that I can do everything within hand reach. So I just made it so that I can move quickly, um, which is obviously a really important consideration in any sort of production. Um, I don't want to be getting a ladder, even a step stool. Um, the way we're going to take these to market is simply taking these off. So when they're fully mature, we just pop the whole system off and we can bring it to a farmer's market or to a store. This is standard nine inch. I believe the primary supplier of NFT systems is Crop King. They will give you these systems ready to go at nine inches. These are very economical systems and they just work so much better than anything you can do it yourself with. I've done different spacing and I settled, again, this is actually nine inches. So it's nine inches this way, nine inches that way. Um, and that's because I'm primarily growing and going to be growing different types of lettuce and strawberries in these systems. I have some dino kale here, which I'm probably gonna phase out because they are young, but these were all planted at the same time. So you can see that the lettuce just is performing better. Um, so I'm probably going to phase that out, in which case um, I feel like, yeah, this spacing where lettuce at full maturity, these plants are full maturity, these ones are not quite. 18 yeah. plants per yeah. row, so people can do the math, yeah. go as high as they want, and yeah. you get a lot of yield. Yeah. How long have those plants that we're seeing been in there? They're, I, would, I think they're at about four weeks. We do the first three weeks in, in seed trays. Um, and that's how you increase your production. Um, so first three weeks in seed trays, put them in here for the last week. So lettuce is about a seven week crop if you're growing quickly. This is the nutrient reservoir right here, which is compost tea from the worm tap. There's a water pump in here and there's an air pump in here. And then I have these bags of hydrogen clay pebbles. What that does is, this is a hydroponic system, but it's an organic hydroponic system where beneficial microbes are doing all of the work to bring, to make the nutrients available and to bring them to the plants. Um, which means you have to have a lot of biological surface area in your system. The, the NFT channels have almost no biological surface area. Um, you know, they're just smooth surfaces, and you, but you need homes for all of these beneficial microbes to live to do the work to make the nutrients available to the plants. Um, so that's what the hydrogen is. The hydrogen are clay pebbles that 
are porous, so it's like it's expanded clay. And they have a huge biological surface area to volume ratio. So those are in the reservoir with an aerator. So it's providing the oxygen to keep those beneficial microbes alive. The nutrients are pumped up, and this is, this is just standard irrigation line. Plug it into your water pump, pumps up here. You have these drip line feeder tubes that just puncture into that, and then they feed down. It feeds into the top two, it runs to the end, and then it feeds down into these and comes back and feeds back. So this is called a recirculating uh, hydroponic system, um, which means that the nutrients throughout the day are constantly depleting and they need to be replenished. To maintain, I'm gonna compare it to the garden beds in the back, which is what 90% of gardeners are doing is they're doing raised beds. Um, it's a lot easier than that. So soil, I mean, maybe I'm just not that good in soil, but um, in terms of the amount of work it does to maintain fertility and understand, for, I mean, understanding fertility in soil just takes time to develop. Um, and it's not short of sending your soil in regularly to labs to get it to get it tested. It's it's difficult to really know that you have optimal fertility. Whereas with hydroponic systems, there's home test kits. Um, but in five minutes, I can know exactly if this is uh, if this is at an optimal nutrient level. That level of empowerment and control makes it really easy. Also, this is all at standing level. It's so easy to work. Um, harvesting, you know, it's, this is harvesting. You just pull it out like that. When you take it out, you just pop a new one in. I think a lot of organic growers feel that since soil's not involved, yeah. these are not biologically active systems. What would be your response to that? I generally agree with the premise, and that's based on the fact that historically hydroponic systems have been almost all mined fertilizers, mined chemicals, petrochemical fertilizers. However, you have aquaponics, so using fish, um, and you have vermaponics, which nobody's really doing, but we're starting to do it. The microbiome in organic aquatic systems is just as complex and dense as it is in the soil. I mean, we have, most of our life lives in oceans or in waterways. And those plants are getting all the nutrients that live in the ocean, that live in lakes, whatever. Those plants are getting all the nutrients they need in an organic way through absorption through the water. So it's similar. I mean, there's tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of unique organisms that are living in this system that are doing all of what I would consider organic work to produce, produce this food. A major thing that you just can't compete with is there's no time between harvest and consumption with this system. You know, you can pick it and consume it immediately, and even if you don't, they still have their roots intact, so they're still feeding themselves, they're still alive. One great thing about this design is it's totally customizable for an urban environment. You can make them all different shapes, sizes, fit yeah. them to all different spaces. Here you have a smaller system right at the back, you know, squeeze in here where you park your car. You know, you've also had these channels set up in a similar system on your roof. I live in a 600 square foot cottage in an urban setting. So our, our roof space, um, yeah, it's about 600 square feet. Um, I calculated, so I have one, one slant of the roof that faces um, south and another that faces north. And so I can, again, I can adjust the solar incidence throughout the year. On my 600 square foot roof, if I do just half, I can do 50 channels up there. I've already prototyped it. I've already run four channels successfully. It works really well. 
So that's 50 times 18 is uh, 900, 900 heads of lettuce that I can have growing a month on my roof. You want to grow in your zone one because you want to walk by every single day and see it just like that other system is, is on our front yard. It's where we walk out of the house every day. Um, and this is where our car is. So we're, you know, going by it every day and you can check on it. So the one disadvantage of the roof is it's not in zone one and you have to intentionally go up there, you know, every day and just check on things because you never know what could go wrong. Like, you know, a water line stops feeding it. Even just one hour of a water line stopping on a roof, those plants will be dead, you know, because it's such an exposed environment. That's one of the disadvantages of NFT is because it's, so NFT stands for nutrient film technique, which means there's just a film of nutrients in here. But anywhere from like a 16th of an inch to an eighth of an inch, maybe even as much as a quarter inch, if you don't have your system well designed, you know, if you don't have ways to ensure that this thing is flowing and it goes dry, then, you know, your plants are, are dead in one day. So that is a disadvantage. I, that has happened to me and I've made adjustments. It's one of the, it's just one of the hard learning curves, just like every type of growing situation has like something that you have to learn the hard way and that's one. <laughs> sure. I mean, the huge benefit, especially here in California is it's a limited water yeah. use farming. By my calculations, I've now been doing this for two years. I'm using about 20 to 30% of the water that I use. So for the same output in soil. So for the same output I get in my garden beds, it's, it's using about 20% of the water. Now you go online and everybody says, it's 90% less water. I think that's a little hyperbolic. Like everybody's throwing that number around. I've never actually seen that level, but still, I mean, a 70% reduction or 60% reduction in water is still a substantial amount and it's totally worthwhile.